Okay, so the guitar we're looking at today is an Epiphone Explorer. Okay, so those of you guys that aren't familiar with Epiphone, they are basically a company which is owned by Gibson. So you can see the Gibson logo there in the center inlay. And basically Gibson bought Epiphone several decades ago and Epiphone is known to basically manufacture versions of Gibson guitars at an affordable price and they do this mainly by uh, constructing the guitars overseas. They used to do a lot of them in Japan, then Korea, and nowadays most of them are constructed in China. So they do make all versions of pretty much all the Gibson guitars including the famous Les Paul, the SG, the Explorer, which I have here, uh, the Flying V, and then of course they make their own versions of some Epiphone guitars as well. Um, so we're going to be looking at this Explorer here today. <clears throat> now something interesting about these uh, Epiphone and Gibson guitars in fact as well is if you look on the back of them, you can get a little more information. So this is an eBay guitar, right? I purchased this on eBay. And if you look at the back of the uh, top here, which is what's called the hockey stick tuning, um, if you look on the back of that, you can see some serial numbers. Usually it'll start with a letter, and depending on what that letter is, it'll tell you where it was manufactured. So I looked this up, U is Unsung Korea. And then the very next two digits are gonna give you the date and then the two after that are going to give you the month that it was manufactured. So this was made in 2002, which is when they were still produced in Korea, and apparently in December. So we have a 2002 beautiful uh, Epiphone Explorer. Okay, another way to tell is these older models, they have the Gibson logo right there in the center. And the newer ones don't have that anymore. So I kind of like that. I used to have um, an Epiphone SG that if you look at some of the videos on my channel, you can see me playing that a long, long time ago uh, before I really knew what I was doing. Didn't even have an amplifier plugged in. So we're going to be taking a look at some of the features of this guitar and then playing a little bit uh, clean and distorted, okay? So let's get a better look at this guitar here, okay? As you can see, this Explorer is a huge guitar, okay? You see the, the shape of it from that spike right there all the way to that spike is absolutely massive. But the incredible thing with it though is that, you know, it's, it's a heavier guitar, okay? I had an SG, this is obviously heavier, but it doesn't feel that much bulkier than the original SG. So it's really nice, you have two humbucker pickups here, okay? You have the infamous two nomadic bridge, which Gibson guitars are famous for, and of course the stop bar. Then you have three control knobs, which are gonna be, uh, two of them are volume controls for one for the neck pickup, one for the bridge pickup, and of course, your master tone knob. And then you have your jack right there at the bottom, so pretty convenient. Below that, you'll also see the two bolts where you can attach your strap, okay? So, you know, as you can tell, it's a very nice, beautiful guitar. I absolutely love the shape of it. Okay, uh, you could see on my shirt, I'm a big Metallica fan, and that's when I fell in love with these guitars, was the band Metallica, and um, just over the years, you know, watching videos of James Hetfield playing these guitars, but a lot of other famous guitars too, The Edge from U2, he loves to play these as well, and uh, eventually just fell in love with this guitar and realized I had to have one, so as soon as I saw one on eBay at a reasonable price, and this is pre-owned by the way, I mean look, this guitar is almost 20 years old and yet it's just almost flawless. I mean, just look at the finish on it. Clean, satin, ebony, beautiful finish, clean white pick guard. I mean, this thing looks like it's hardly even been played and the electronics function perfectly, it's quiet. Look, it's plugged in right now. That's my Fender Champion 20 watt amplifier, by the way, which we're gonna be playing on today. I'll do a review of that later. But uh, this thing is plugged in right now and you can't even hear it. Like, just moving it around. I used to have a, an Epiphone SG and just moving it around, it would make so much noise. And this thing is just dead quiet until you play it, you know? Beautiful sound right there. So now let's turn it over, show you some of the features on the back. One of the coolest things about this is it has a set-in neck, okay? Set-in neck joint. 
Um, my Gibson, uh, sorry, not Gibson, my Epiphone SG before this had a bolt-on neck. So, you know, for those who aren't familiar, uh, bolt-on neck, you'll see a little plate down here where it's literally bolted the neck to the body. Set-in neck is actually set in and glued. And then, of course, you have neck through bodies where it's just constructed of one huge piece of wood, which is, of course, the best, but super expensive and uh, more common on basses than guitars. But uh, set-in neck is generally considered to be the second best option. It gives you good connection between the neck and the body, so you get a clean tone, and the pickups pick that up nicely. And so that gives you a really great sound, and I can just tell you the difference between playing my old... Epiphone bolt-on neck SG versus this set-in neck Explorer huge difference um, And then of course you have the bay right here for electronics um, Haven't modified anything yet on it. This is still the stock pickups that it comes with okay, but um, Maybe I possibly am thinking about putting a set of EMG Pickups on here maybe 8160 something like that. I'd like active pickups. So I'll get a little better uh, metal sound more distortion on the you know, more uh, crisp, chunky sound on the distortion is something I'd really like out of this guitar. And um, then, of course, we have the tone selector right here, which um, the bottom right there is going to be your bridge. The top is going to be your neck. And then the center is going to give you a mixture of both pickups. Okay, so that's just some guitar basics. These are the tuners up here. Um, it's a little different from most guitars in that it has them all straight in a line here in this famous shape, which is known as the hockey stick, uh, uh, hockey stick tuning. So that's pretty cool. And then um, beautiful fretboard. You know, I believe this is a rosewood. And then of course you have the dot inlays, and then the body, which is uh, not a true mahogany, but I believe it's a similar wood. And then of course this beautiful black finish on it is just gorgeous. I mean, this guitar, let's put it in the stand here so you can just get a look at it. I mean, it just looks beautiful just sitting there. You know, this is really, if, if you have a guitar, uh, if you're looking for a guitar or something you want to play on stage that can give you some sense of style, I mean, this is a great choice. Okay, so that's a little introduction. Uh, Epiphone Explorer 2002 Korean model and the Fender Champion 20 watt amp so let's get a little bit of playing on it now i'm going to start with clean tone show you all the pickup settings on that and then we're going to play a couple of high gain tones just a, kind of a classic rock higher higher gain and then we're going to switch to the metal setting on this champion and play you a little bit of metallica and some other stuff so here we are with the explorer okay as you can see sitting down playing it it fits really nicely. It's got that little crook in there, so it just sits nice on your thigh. But uh, plays good with the strap, too. So we're going to run through just some clean tones, okay? Settings on my Champion 20 right now. I've got treble max, uh, uh, bass max, no gain, and volume maxed out, okay? It's a 20-watt amp, so hopefully it'll be loud enough you guys can hear it. Just clean tone, all right? And uh, I'm going to start with the neck pickup here for some clean tones, okay? Here we go. switch now to the bridge pickup okay I don't really like to play the bridge pickup on clean tone because it just doesn't really sound right to me but just to give you guys kind of an idea of how it sounds here so as you can see it's kind of twangy and just a little bit too loud in my opinion um, what I really like to play on, on a clean tone, is actually the center. 
to give me both pickups and it just gives you a great sound. So listen to this. So just even running through chords, you can hear the distinctive brightness, uh, and that's kind of what these explorers are well known for on a clean sound. Um, just some more song, uh, clean tone here for you. Uh, and again, this is in the center pickups. So that's uh, center, um, kind of gives you an idea of how it sounds on a clean tone. So yeah, I think it sounds pretty good on a clean tone. Um, now what we're going to do is I'm going to turn the gain up a little bit and just run through kind of, you know, a few classic rock kind of high gain, but not really... Um, not really any effects on this amplifier as far as like metal sounds or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is uh, I like to keep the treble on 10 or 9, drop the bass to about 7, um, turn the volume down because this amp gets really loud when you kick the gain up, and then I max the gain out. See, so you can hear that, that difference. You know, that high gain. too much classic rock so I'm just gonna play what I know uh, as far as this stuff <laughs> see I like how clean it uh, you know how quiet it functions it really gives you crisp you know whatever you're trying to play So that's center pickup, okay? Now let's try the bridge pickup, which I think, well, let me give you the neck first. I don't usually do the neck on distortion. Bridge sounds way better on distortion, but you'll see what I'm saying. So this is, again, neck pickup, high gain. See, I just really don't like the sound of it. It sounds too thick and bassy for me. Now we switch to the bridge pickup.
hear the difference? That's bridge pickup, neck now. Middle. Bridge again. It's got great sustain. Hear how long that tone just goes on and on. We're gonna switch now to the neck pickup. And just do some, uh, you know, just some soloing, just give you an idea what it sounds like. This is just a gain, uh, no metal setting on this. metal it's gonna be a great guitar I'll do a uh, review on this amplifier later and show you the exact settings I use to get this metal tone if you do have this amplifier but for now let's just go ahead and play it up. all right we're gonna turn it up a little hopefully this isn't too loud for you guys uh, switch to the bridge pickup of course and then rock out just a bit and this allows it to cut through a little bit better. Thank you. 
that just kind of gives you an idea on the bridge pickup, some of the some of the metal sounds. I think it's really great sound. You can get some real crunchy uh, riffs out of this and just almost get the tone dialed in. I'll tell you, with a pair of EMG pickups, bass a boogie amplifier, you could get this tone dialed in to sound exactly like James Hetfield. On Ride the Lightning, he played a Gibson Explorer. It was the white one that said So One on it, and then later he switched to ESP guitars. But uh, he's always loved this Explorer shape, Explorer body. Explorer, great guitar at a great price. I picked this up used on eBay, $400, um, just the price of the guitar, and then maybe another $50 for shipping, and you know another $50 or so for taxes. So about $500 bucks I picked this up. Um, you can get used ones for about $400. You can get new ones for about $600 if you want a newer one. Lots of different models. Um, so thanks for watching my review. Stay tuned for more guitar stuff, and I will be doing a review of the amplifier next. So thanks for watching. Welcome back to my channel.